because that's awesome too. It's very, very awesome. And it's really awesome to have a daughter and a father that has served in the same branch. That is awesome. Amen. Not all I can do is be a dad in the third grade together, you know, at the same time, but we never <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all didn't serve at the same time, but that's, that's awesome. Amen. Uh, and me and my dad being in third grade at the same time did have our advantage day to go to school. <laughs> didn't God do it? Take it from the beginning there. Spiritual warfare is 10% safe tactics, 90% how we respond. Remember when, y'all say this with me, let's say it together. Spiritual warfare is 10% Satan's tactics, 90% how we respond. Remember, with God, we are not helpless, we are not hopeless, but we are powerful. Give the Lord a hand clap. Go ahead and stand up and we get ready to sing. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship, O oh Lord. Give the Lord another hand that and pray. Y'all ready? Sing something. Y'all ready to sing something? God good.
on the way in or you can drop it off on the way out. If you've already dropped off, just hold up your hand. If you haven't, then hold your offering in your hand. I want you to hold it up. I want you to say this with me. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Except my seed. Praise the Lord, saints. It's time to go to the Lord in prayer. Does anybody have an outspoken request? No, let the man have special needs. All the first ones that stood here. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house and be alongside the people, Lord God. And as we gather together, one mind and one accord, we ask that your presence will be here, touching each and every situation, Lord God. Each and every request, Father. You heard the cry of your people, Lord God. We just ask you to minister in a mighty way, Lord God. Touch those spoken and unspoken alike. And Father, anyone that's lost, bring them to the fold where we have time to draw them out. Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor for all. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to do something different. And so we need you to need your help. I remember song, Amen. The spiritual. <laughs> amen. So what I need you to do is look up there and make sure you sing Amen. Sierra's going to sing the verses. And we all going to sing amen. So everybody, this is a, this is going to be awesome. Amen. So it, it, everybody's heard the song amen. We used to sing it here when we had a choir. It, it, it's good. Amen. amen. Yeah. So everybody, everybody stand up. We're going to give it a shot. All right.
not going there yet. We get your Bible out. We're going to we're going to go to the Joshua. A young American tourist goes in a guy to, goes on a guided tour in a creepy old European castle. At the end of the tour, the guy asked her how she enjoyed it. She admitted that she was a bit worried about seeing a ghost in some of the dark, cobwebby rooms and castles. Don't worry, says the guy. I've, I've never seen a ghost the whole time I've been here. And so they asked him, How long is that, sir? Uh, Ma'am, she said, hey, Sir, he said about 300 years. <laughs> I know, burn it. But my wife was telling me that's like, she didn't say throw it away, she said burn it. That's bad when your wife says, burn the book. God is good. All the time. All the time. All right. Today is Memorial Day. And today's an awesome day because we remember those that died uh, defending our freedom. And that's a very powerful thing. And we should not take it lightly. You know, I, I remember this story that always sticks out in my mind. Is, is there was a young lady, her, her son joined the, during Desert Storm. Her son joined the Marine Corps. And I, I had to walk into her at uh, Walmart and Uber. And she was in, in there shopping, but she was crying. And I said, what is going on? She said, my son is shipping out tomorrow. And she said, the Lord has showed me he's not coming back. And so I said, well, I can't tell you if he's coming back or not, but I can tell you this. God's got him. He's a Christian, and he loves God. And we know that whatever happens, we do know that God has got him. And she said, okay, we pray. And I said, remember, no matter what happens, God has him. And he's going to be okay with God no matter what. Well, it wasn't very long that he was being, he was over in, on, on duty and hit a high day. And they thought they could save him, and they didn't, and they killed, they killed him. And I remember seeing her afterwards. And there's nothing to say. Nothing. I mean, you got a son that's 20 years old, 19 years old, and, and he's out, he's got his mind made up that he's going to work for this is what he thought was working for the Lord. And so I said, well, just know this. That that I know it's hard to understand now, but know this is that God had him going and God's got him now. And and I just prayed with her and she's doing good now, but Still, and every time a Day comes around, I think about that. And I think about his funeral because they had a crane up in the air and they had a big old American flag. And when they came by, the people lined up on the streets there was an American flag flying when, it, when his coffin came through. I, I just, I, I can't even, I can't even imagine. I really can't. You know, I, it was bad enough with Daniel when they were there. And, and, and I was, it just, my nerves said, I I can't imagine what all these people have felt all these years. And some have never seen any remains or anything. They have no idea. And, and I just ask God to always bring them comfort. Amen. Amen. If somebody say, God's got this. God's got this. Okay. Eddie might need to get up there. I'm not sure if Frank's here yet. Make sure we got some sand. All right. We got it. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic.
and of orders of the officers appointed only. According to the regulation, the Uniform Code of Military Justice.
the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they they're there until this day. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished. Then the Lord commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hastened and passed over. And it came to pass when all the people were being passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priest and the presence of the people. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord uh, to the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Let's ask God for a special touch. And Lord and Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well known for him, Father. Ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us, Father. I ask you right now, Lord, to do what only you can do, Lord, and that is do something very powerful this day. Open our mind, open our eyes. Help us, God, to see what you've got in store for us, Lord, and help us to remember those stones. And, Lord, help us also to remember that all over this nation there are stones all over, memorials, markers, gravestones, and also help us to remember what our people did for us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray in the church head. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, don't plan on keeping you long, but I just said don't plan on it. didn't say you don't plan on it. I said I don't plan on it. Are you ready? Look at somebody say, y'all guys are looking good. Y'all guys are looking good. All right. What, what do these stones mean? Memorial Day, 2023. Okay. It was a new day dawn. These guys had been 40 years uh, in the wilderness walking around. God's promise is right there in their hand. They passed the entrance to the promised land hundreds, y'all say hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of times, but they were never allowed to go in because of their disobedience to God, because of their lack of faith that God could do what he said he could do. So because of it, they had 40 years of wandering, but only they have 40 years of wandering, they had 40 years of what ifs. What if we listen? What if we had not listened to the negative talk? What if we had not listened to the bad guys? What if we had not have not feared Pharaoh so much? What would have happened? So what ifs and could have been. But and also that they also had the known. A lot of times people refuse to step further out because they are afraid to go to the unknown. They want to go uh, uh, in the known. So, today, listen to this, today they would leave it all behind. Something special is getting ready to take place. Matter of fact, look at this, they're wondering what is could have been the known, but now they can leave all that behind because in front of them is continuous. Y'all say continuous. This is our life too. Continuous unknown, continuous challenges, continuous battles. How many have battles lately? I mean, he's having a day. Amen? All right. And continuous victories. Today, they would need to keep looking forward. I'm here to tell you, if you want to do anything effective for God, you have to keep a forward look. You can't keep looking backwards. You've got to look forward. You've got to understand that back there, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. So now, so I see this. Well, so now, the new days dawning, there was uh, the promise, there was the path. The path of the promise. I'm going to read a little bit. This is, this, is, this is powerful. The Jordan River, under normal circumstances, was anywhere between 10, 15 foot deep, and it was about 100 foot across. And when God decided that it was time for his people to go, he didn't go when it looked easy. Uh, did anybody see the mighty army this morning? I want you to think about the mighty army this morning. Let's see if I can, if I can, if I can uh, pull, pull it up. Let's see. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Praise God. I'll get it in a second. I promise you. And I know where it's at. I just can't get my fingers working. Okay. This is this is this morning's body army. 
If the path before you is clear, you're probably on somebody else's path. That's pretty cool. If the path before you is clear, then you're probably on somebody else's path because God wants us to walk by faith, and we walk by faith. Sometimes the path is not so clear. So, so the path of the promise, they're, they're swollen, all right? The path of the promise is swollen. Here it is, listen. Uh, in, in, in chapter 3, verse 14, And it came to pass that the people removed their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflowed her banks at the time of the harvest. Then the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam, what's Adam? Beside Zaratan and, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, I'll say salt sea, oh, it failed and were cut off, and the people passed right over against Jericho. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over dry ground until all the people were clean over Jordan. Now, now this is let's just do some statistics here. The path of the promise. It was swollen. God didn't choose when they could say any way whatsoever that they could have done it without God. Think about it today. What are you doing that you would love to be able to do it on your own, but God's got you in a position where you cannot do it without God. I promise you, if you cannot do it without God, then God's getting ready to do something special for you. Amen? So, this it was swollen. Remember now. Now watch. Remember, it's a hundred foot wide under normal circumstances, maybe a little further some other places, and it's about uh, 10 to 15 foot deep. But now because it is swollen, <coughs> it now overflows, and instead of a hundred feet, it is anywhere from a mile, mile and a half, to two miles across. Because it's swollen. Because it's overflowing. And if you look really strong, now watch this. Here's the picture of the promise. The path of the promise now. It is, it is a mile wide or farther. It is not a little, little longer 10 foot, 15 foot deep. Now it is 100 foot deep. So you got a 100 foot Jordan River in front of it. It's 100 foot deep. It's a mile across. And you've got to get in. So here's the power of the promise. God says... When the feet of the priest touch the ground or touch the water, then it's going to part. And if you look at the city and look at the sea where it parted, you know how far that sea parted? It parted 20 miles. 20 miles of dry land. So each side of the water can so it's about as much as high as, as 100 foot high on each side of them, is 20 miles wide because about a million and a half Jews were having to cross over. And so for, or for a million and a half Jews to cross over, there had to be a very wide path. So God opens it up 20 miles. And they go across on dry ground. When they go across on dry ground, now, now here's the picture of the problems. He said, when you get in there, there's two things I want you to do. First, you pick your man out on the beach tribe. He said, I want you to pick up a stone and carry it over to the other side. He said, I also want you to put stones, 12 stones in the memorial, right there where the priest stood in the midst of dry ground, in the midst of that mile plus, 100 foot high plus, stood right there. I want you to put a memorial there. Now, hold on just a minute. Well, nobody's going to see it. But we get to that in a minute. So, so, so here it is. The prophecy is, you're going to go to the other side. The path of the promise is it. God, you're giving us something that's impossible to do. Even under normal circumstances, it would be tough. But now it's really bad. It's the worst we've seen it. And you're going to give this to us as a promise. Then the power of the promise. So God, just to show us, and I'm going to show you a little bit, he parts in 20 miles, dry ground, they go over, and they get 12 stones. So this is a very, very, very powerful stuff. So now, here's the picture of the promise of the world. The men took 12 stones. They took 12 stones from Jordan's floor and piled them together. From Jordan's floor. Y'all say the place of the impossible. Place of the impossible. 
Say it again. The place of the impossible. God said, I want you to get it from Jordan's Ford, the place of the impossible. Pile them together because the place of the impossible now becomes the place of possibility. Y'all say possibility. possibility. Some of y'all got some impossible things in your life, but if you keep moving forward instead of backwards and trust God, what seems to be impossible will become a place of possibility. So now they're in the land of, of promise. Now, <laughs> the land of promise, again, is the place of impossible challenge. Y'all say impossible challenge. Impossible. <laughs> How many of you got any impossible challenges in front of you today? Amen? There's some, there's some tough challenges out there. So, so at this place, an unmistakable marker, the 12 stones. So the, un the, the impossible challenges are now becoming possible and God wants that memorial there so when people come back and look at it, they can say, you know what? We walked all the way across here on dry ground and these stones came right out of the midst of it that are sitting there. Matter of fact, if some of y'all right now could learn to build some memorials in your life for the other things God done for you, it's amazing how that will keep you looking forward and start doing something even greater and, and see the challenge start dwindling in front of you. So this is the place where God demonstrated his power to overcome any obstacle. So what does these stones mean? Well, first, these stones meant that there was struggle. Not only was there struggle, there was strength, and there was success. Now, what else do these stones mean? That although there was that struggle in the past and strength and success, there's going to be struggle, <laughs> there's going to be strength, and there's going to be success in your future. If you think that you're going to live a life without struggle, it's not going to happen. So again, what does this mean? Spiritual success always comes through struggle. Look at somebody say, say ask them, say, don't ask for what? Just say, you got any struggles in your life? You got any struggles in your life? Well, guess what? That means you're getting ready to see some victory. I get ready to explain that in a minute of how God works for this stuff. So now, again, what does this mean? And I'm trying to keep it short. Behind us, always remember, there was protection, there was provision, and there was presence. How many remember those? In the fact, how many have seen some things in your life in the past that you didn't think you were going to get through and you got through? How many had challenges in the past that you said, Lord, this is going to kill me? And it did. God always came through. So, these stones remind me in the past there was protection, there was provision, there was presence. Now, so that means ahead, there's going to be protection, there's going to be provision, and there's going to be presence. Okay? I keep saying what these stones mean because it's important. What these stones mean? God always helps us through the struggle. Get ready. Here it goes. God let giants in the promised land on purpose. He could have zapped them. God could have just been, man, get out of here. He did. He said, I want you to go to a land flowing with milk and honey that I gave you. It's yours. Well, God, if you gave it to me, why? Leaves giants in our life to produce struggle. God knows that a lack of struggle produces spiritual weakness. It takes away our spiritual edge. We become thankless to God. And we find ourselves in spiritual lazy. In the book of Acts, yeah, Pentecost came. I mean, it was some powerful, powerful stuff. People were hearing God's message in their own language. It was this is the miracle of the tongues, or is it the miracle of the ears, or is it the miracle of both? Everybody's hearing it in their own language. It's a very powerful thing. People are growing, jumping in there, getting into church, and the Bible says the church grew mightily. Every time 
church through mileage. <clears throat> For the next chapter or so, people would get settled. They would get settled in their routine, including their spiritual routine. And so as they became settled, God will let Satan attack. Wow. This powerful church, things are happening. They're still under attack. Satan is attacking the church every chance he gets. And so now they're having to struggle. Here they are, they're, they're, they're the fresh body, fresh, new off the press. God's doing something special. Yet they still find themselves struggling. But what they discovered is, you read the book of Acts, every time they had a Satan, every time they started getting comfortable, God allowed an attack. And every time he allowed an attack, God showed up, God showed off, and at the end of every attack it says, and the church grew mightily. So what's going on? Every time there was problems, the church grew. When there wasn't problems, the church settled. Think about it. You're dead in the storm. America had really, really, really gotten settled down. And as Desert Storm continued, because we've never been anything like that in this generation, and as Desert Storm started and then things started getting worse and worse and worse, the churches started to fill up. Why? It's the Book of Acts principle. When people find themselves in struggle, they shed their spiritual laziness and they get down to business with God. I was pastoring in Bath, and I remember very clearly all the denominations in Bath. There was five different churches, and we all monthly would meet somewhere and we'd have a prayer for what was going on when the when, 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 uh, when it first happened, we all had a prayer meeting. We got together and had a little service, and we prayed for God to move swiftly and quickly and help us do our part to help. And then when it ended, we did the same thing. We all got together, and it was amazing. that It didn't matter if you were Church of God, Church of Christ, Methodist, Baptist. It didn't matter. We all pulled together, and the churches would pack out. It's amazing when trouble comes. How it draws us closer to God. It's really awesome that God has that ability to draw us to Him even in our struggle. So, let me tell you about struggle. You, you think you're up? I might be going through some struggle today. Let me tell you something. This is about struggle. <laughs> struggle is a sign, number one, that there's still life in you. Dead man ain't struggling. They are not struggling here. They are already with God. There's no struggle here. So if you're struggling today, that shows there's life in you. And there's potential in you. And because there's potential in you, the giants are watching you. Number two, it also shows you that Satan doesn't have you yet. You're a problem. If he has you, he can back off a little bit. And the more he wants you and the more you resist him, the harder he will attack. <laughs> spiritual warfare. But remember, spiritual warfare is 10% of what Satan does, 90% of how we respond. Struggle is also a sign that God still has need of you. Purpose. God still got you. You can't be bad enough that God can't use you. You can't have gone so far off the deep end on the other side that God still doesn't have something for you. It's a very, 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 very powerful thing. <clears throat> Number four, God is still defending you. There's power there. Because if he wasn't defending you, can you imagine going through what you're going through without God's help? I can't even imagine. I can't imagine some of the things that we're forced to deal with. 
You know, in just the last, you know, week before last, I preached the funeral. While I'm preaching the funeral, the King Funeral Home asked me, can I preach another funeral? So I preached another funeral on Friday. And just then I just saw, I, I got a memo that said I'm preaching the funeral in Virginia this week. So there's funerals. And I tell everybody when I do the funeral, here's what I tell them. Here's what I tell them when, 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 when the family's praying before we go in. Is that quit saying I got to be strong. Quit saying that because if you try to be strong on your own, you'll fall. Start saying God be strong in me and through me and just let God be strong through you. Because when I get up in that pulpit and preach the funeral, that's what I say. God, I need you. I can't do this. I've got to have your help. Because without you, I'm nothing. But with you, I can do all things. And I thank God for it. So, so again, God is defending you. And finally, if you're in a struggle right now, know that breakthrough is on the way. Because God's only let you go so far before He steps in. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. <laughs> didn't say there wouldn't be any problems. Didn't say there wouldn't be any pain. Did not say there wouldn't be any scars. But it does mean that you can walk beyond what you've been through, and God will be there with you. Finally, we're getting close to the end now, we'll leave it or not. What does those mean? What about the monument at the river? In the river. Unseen by all. Would that make a difference? You got those, those, those stones are on the other side of the river, and you can say they picked them up. As they come across the people up where the priests were and the building the wall here, but what about the ones underwater? What about the ones that may never be seen again? They're unseen by all. Except. Get ready. They're unseen by all except God and the ones that went through. If you've been through something and God showed up and God showed off and He helped you through it, there's something that just plants in you. And you thank God because you know God did that. You know God handled that through you. That God did show Himself strong through you because you can't handle them your own. You see, after the trial, after the test, after the battle, after the struggle that you're going through, there's still something inside of you. There's something there that nobody can take away. No matter how many times they try to tell you that it didn't happen, no matter how many times they try to tell you whatever, Nobody knows but you and God what you did for. Nobody understands but you and God. And nobody can take that away from you. Not even say, Wow. What these students mean is a memorial. The visible one was a testimony to the generations to the faithfulness of God. The invisible one was a testimony to the child of God here in our heart. <clears throat> I want to tell a little story and then we're going to have all the problems. Brandy, you can come up and start getting ready to play something. My mama the very first time she's taken to Pitmore Hospital <clears throat> and they said she's got nine blockages in her heart <clears throat> and we're going to try to get her working again 
And as a pastor, I've been there for other people, but I never had my mama up there. And it was just serious that she could die, either before, during, or after all this. And so, my family was really in a bad fix. My, my brothers and my sister and my dad and all the in-laws. And I went walking just to pray. And I walked to the children's ward. See, about six years or seven years before, the prognosis was that for Daniel was uh, cystic fibrosis. He was in the children's ward, and they said if he lived through this episode, he was so sick, they said he would never live to be 17. And next door to him was a little boy that was 12 who had cystic fibrosis. And Daniel turned one year old in that intensive care unit. And back then, the children could write on the walls. And so the little 12 year old boy put on the outside of Daniel's room and drew a birthday cake with one candle and put Happy Birthday, Daniel. One, 16, God healed Daniel. Miraculously healed him. Although they tried to tell me over the years that he wasn't healed, he's still healed. He's healed. Well, my mama was having that surgery. And I was really, really struggling because everybody was so out of it as I walked through the children's ward. Guess what was still there? That birthday on that wall with that one candle. And it said, Happy Birthday, Daniel. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I did the impossible once. Don't you think I can do it again? That was my son. My son was. And so I walked back to my mom. She ain't gone to surgery yet. And I looked at mama. I said, Mama, look at me. I said, you got to tell me. i got to hear you say something out of your own mouth. Because she was upset too. I said, you got to say something out of your own mouth. She said, what? And my family was so out of it. I just asked him, give me a minute. Give me a minute. I said, Mama, I want you to say this to me. And we're going to say it together. She said, what is it, son? I said, it's not my time. And my mama said, I said, say this with me. It's not my time yet. And she said, they're coming to take her to the heart surgery. And everybody wanted to stay in the room. And I walked all the way through her, but I couldn't walk any further, holding her hand. And all the way through, I said, Mama, God showed me it's not your time yet. It's not your time yet. I wouldn't hear you say it's not your time yet. And just when I took her behind those double doors, I gave her a kiss. I said, Mama, why are you supposed to be saying? She said, it's not my time. I said, where are you getting that from? I said, do you remember Daniel being up here? That cake is still up there. God go Daniel. God's going to do something special for you. I can't tell you how many years she lived after that. She still went through a lot of surgery. She still had struggled. There were still problems. But every time she went through something, I went back to those times. And me and Mom together would say, it's not my time yet. <coughs> I don't know what your reward is. I have no idea. And I know you're going through struggles now. You're going through pain now. It's there. Pain is part of life. And I hate to say it like I'm being cold. I'm not being cold. Pain is part of life. The path to heaven is paved with pain. The path to heaven is paved with struggle. 
We live in the land of the giants, and the giants are out to stop us at any cost. Just like with Joshua and his guy. like the Joshua, just like the book of Acts, just like my mom, just like Daniel, God shows up in the struggle, as long as you're moved, but he holds my hand through it, and leads me through it, I thank you. Everybody let's stand.
Can I be? To never forget. Stand strong. Stand true. And to believe what you said is possible with you. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for it. Help us to draw closer to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You might tell you all we can do today. Most of God's awesome. All the time. God's always like, said, Lord's Prayer. And everybody has to go to Jimmy and Walker and dismiss us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into the church, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Father, we just thank you for this day. Honor and food that have served this country and wants to come home and love us to get home. Bless the blessed families, comfort them. The Lord wants us all to love one's ways to comfort them and bless them. God, and us as we do with our separate as we do with the and wish you And that's the all that you should find. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and I'll obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. The freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself.